Welcome everyone back to Weekly Weather Updates and this evening we'll have a look at the latest from the, the live radar then we'll have a look at some weather warnings we do have a yellow warning for rain and then we'll have a look at the GFS, the GEM, the E7F we'll have the NAO and the AO and we'll finish up our look at the GFS ensembles and the UK Mass of his run as if you've seen my video yesterday we are starting to see some very interesting model output for the second half of November that uh, interest is increased today with more ensemble members going for something a bit colder towards the end of November. And we're seeing the potential for some big amplification of the jet stream, a Greenland high potentially developing, which could send us a bit colder. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow us as well, the link's in the description. As you can see at the moment on the live radar, we do have a weather front moving through. Now, it's pretty weak weather front at this stage, as it is coming up against high pressure further south. But it's bringing some patchy rain, heavy at times across many uh, areas of, of the Midlands, into northern England, parts of Wales and Scotland are starting to see some heavier showers push in as well. Now, you can see the main weather front is clearing away, and it should clear over the course of this evening. And we'll still have a showery theme in the north, but a bit dry in the south. We still hang on to the higher pressure. But because we are further northwards, we do have stronger winds and these heavier showers around as well. And if we do have a look at the uh, UK Met Office, have a look at their weather warnings. You can see there is a quite widespread yellow warning across northern Scotland. You can see eight from 8 p.m. Uh, tonight until 5 p.m. tomorrow. Very strong winds likely to result in some travel disruption and dangerous coastal conditions across northern and eastern Scotland. Now, this isn't unusual for autumn. We haven't actually seen that. Too, we haven't seen too many wind warnings um, so far this autumn, but we have seen a significant one coming in now. 60 to 70 mile per hour winds potentially. Locally, 80 mile an hour across uh, exposed areas. And again, in combination with high tides, there could be some large waves. Very likely a lower impact. So definitely going to be some strong winds not likely to be very very dangerous but still do keep an eye out for them uh, if you are across northern scotland or associated um, islands don't take any um, unnecessary risks out there if you are out in the ocean uh, or if you are potentially going to be hit by some very strong winds it does continue through sunday and then it will eventually um, clear through that sunday afternoon so i could do keep an eye out for that uh, over course of this evening and tomorrow. So we now have a look through the GFS, which went very, very cold in yesterday's run. Now, I can say it hasn't quite gone as cold today, but we are still seeing the similar signals of application in the jet stream with this high pressure trying to come up from northeast Canada towards Greenland. So we're still seeing a similar synoptic pattern, but it doesn't quite come off. And we'll see why that happens when we do run through it. So you can see at the moment the low pressure to our north, which is bringing those strong winds across northern scotland tonight uh, and the heavier rain at times you can see those st quite strong north westerly winds um, bringing in some heavy showers as well brief little northerly towards sunday afternoon which could bring some colder air at times in the north but it eventually does get flattened away and we do see a ridge of high pressure in from the south but low pressure for the north and the west and that seam does continue throughout this week we do have high pressure quite close to the southeast so it could be quite dry over the course of this coming week and reasonably warm up air temperatures we could see temperatures getting into low to mid-teens potentially at times however for the north and the west a lot more low pressure even though it is a warmer air mass beyond that into next weekend looks like a polar air mass will move through once again and then we start to see the amplification of the jet stream. We can start to see this high pressure ridging up towards northeast, uh, northeast Canada. We do see the alignment of the jet stream go northwest to southeast. And you can see this amplification trying to push up into Greenland. However, we're seeing a bit of a stronger European high. And we're seeing more low pressure hold on towards northern Greenland. And what, what this does is basically not allow the high pressure to get up and not allow these lows to clear further southwards. And although we do go briefly a bit colder... That high pressure ridge does get flattened. We only see sort of a brief uh, north northerly wind and we go back westerly once again as this low pressure doesn't quite migrate as far southwards and eastwards as it did in yesterday's run. So you can see we have a similar pattern in terms of the application, but it doesn't quite come off. Again, in this long time frame, um, sort of 240 hours plus, we're going to be seeing chopping changes between the runs. Um, so there again, this is just one potential ensemble member uh, and one potential run that could come off. So we do have a look at the GM, see how that does compare. You can see very similar over the next few days with low pressure in the north, higher pressure in the south. And then we start to see amplification of the jet stream. You can see high pressure ridging up from northeast uh, Canada and even over the UK 
even as close as about a week's time, trying to head northwards. The high pressure across um, UK initially is quite a warm high, as you'll see, and we start to see some retrogression, where that high pressure moves against the zonal flow and heads from an east to west direction, where generally winds head west to east. Uh, where we are and you can see right towards the end of the run this high pressure is ridging up towards Greenland and we are seeing northerly winds start plunging down in 10 days time and if you have a look at the pressure patterns you can see that quite strong high pressure ridging up towards Greenland and very strong northerly winds now at this stage we can't see how long this would last um, because that high pressure hasn't quite infiltrated all the way through Greenland and towards the North Pole and if it did then we would be going to sustained cold period. However, if it does get flattened by lower pressure towards northern Canada, then this would only last a couple days. Um, but we can't quite see that on this latest GEM run. But very interesting seeing the GEM run now showing this big application. It's very similar to the GFS in terms of this high pressure moving up, but you can see these purples and blues, which are the deeper lows, are shifted just a bit further eastwards, which means that high pressure is allowed... Uh, to get further northwards and we're seeing this direct northerly and if we do have a look at the 850 hpa temperature deviation you can see very very cold air is plunging in it's quite warm at this stage at the end of the run but that cold air is soon going to be moving in um, and you can see it would be going very cold if we did run that on a little bit more if we do have a look at the ESMOF see what that shows you can see again westerly winds over the next few days and then we start to see that high pressure moving up in a week's time now, in this run, the high pressure doesn't quite infiltrate Greenland once again. We do see a northerly wind, and if we do have a look at the upper air temperatures, we do get some cold air pushing in, especially for the eastern half. But the high pressure is a bit further eastwards and a bit further southwards, which means it doesn't quite get up to Greenland, and we don't pull in that very cold air, which instead migrates towards Siberia, Scandinavia, and eastern parts of Europe. Um, and you can see the UK generally stays pretty chilly under high pressure with a northerly flow. Now, if we did see this high pressure start to retrogress towards Greenland, which isn't out of the picture, seeing how strong this high actually is, 1,040 millibars, you could see it in a couple more days head towards Greenland, and then we would be going into a north or easterly wind. And if we do have a look at the 850 HP temperature deviation, you can see there is a lot of cold air towards Scandinavia, Eastern Europe, um, towards Falbard as well so if we did see a northerly or northeasterly wind move in a couple days after that it would be going cold so you can see all these three operational runs which they still all have a very similar pattern but it's those minute details where does that high pressure blocking go does it head towards Greenland does it stay in the North Atlantic does it topple very quickly that is the questions that we're going to have to see answered over the next few weeks days um, as this starts to resolve in the models and as ever with winter this very subtle changes in the position of these high pressure can give us a westerly wind or could be giving us a very cold northerly wind as we saw with the gm run today as we saw with the gfs yesterday or it could be in between kind of what we're seeing with the ECMWF um, or what we saw with the gfs run today as well so we'll have to really keep an eye on what happens with this so we now have a look at the nao and the ao which is an um, sort of an index that shows the, the strength of the highs and lows in the North Atlantic and the Arctic as well. Now, I've covered this quite a lot um, over the last few months, um, having a look at this, but I'll briefly explain it if you haven't already, uh, already know what it is. So basically, the NAO index is describing the strength of the contrast between the high pressure in the North Atlantic and the low pressure towards Iceland, Greenland, that we generally see um, as a result of the colder air of the pole. It means we have lower pressure, higher, warmer, denser air towards uh, the, uh, the equator, means higher pressure. That is generally what happens. But of course, we see low pressure, high pressure mixing in all the time. Zero on the index would mean we are seeing sort of a general contrast between low pressure towards Iceland and high pressure towards Greenland. If it goes positive, we see a higher contrast than normal, so i.e. stronger low pressure um, and stronger higher pressure, which will give us a stronger wet westy wind, stronger um, jet stream. If we see negative, those low pressure, high pressure contrast is much lower 
Therefore, then we're likely mixing in, we're likely seeing amplification in the jet stream, high pressures heading up towards Greenland, Iceland, lower pressures plunging out into the mid-Atlantic, and that's when we see big amplification. And as you can see on this NAO index at this, at this stage, it is moderate, moderately positive over the next week or so, and it's been pretty negative over the last few weeks. We've been in a negative phase, but you can see towards the middle of the month, you can see very, very big uncertainty we have some remaining relatively strong but we have about a third maybe of these ensemble members going very very negative in the north atlantic which would be symbolic of what we saw on those latest operational runs with big amplification in the jet stream with big high pressure heading up if we also have a look at the Arctic Oscillation, which is the same in terms of positive, is a stronger low pressure to high pressure, um, or a stronger low pressure over the North Pole, whereas negative would be a lower strength low pressure, so more high pressure mixing in. You can see it is slowly decreasing over the next week or so, still positive, so still generally low pressure dominated, and that's why we're seeing generally westerly winds over the next week or two. However, around day 10 and beyond, you can see there are probably about half going negative and a few going very, very negative, which would mean that high pressure that we're seeing ridging up towards Greenland properly infiltrates the Arctic, locks in, and that's where we could be going very, very cold. Now, it is very, uh, it is minority of runs, and you can see the amount of scatter is here. It's just one potential scenario. And have to stress that we're not guaranteed cold weather from this, but it's the first proper potential that we've seen so far this autumn into winter period where we could be seeing something cold towards uh, the end of these runs properly cold as any sort of northerly wind we've had so far over the autumn. There hasn't been that much cold air, but we are heading towards the middle end of November and that's when we can start to see colder weather come to fruition. But again, it is just the potential. And at this stage, there's a low chance it comes off, um, a medium chance that we see, or a medium to high chance that we see something in between, which may mean just cold weather further northwards, or only a short period of cold weather, um, or we just see it sort of topple, or we don't see the high build up at all. So we've just got to keep an eye on it. At this stage, um, it's just interesting to see really what is happening within the models. And of course, it will be resolved better and better every single day. And we've just got to keep an eye on these operational runs and of course the ensembles. So if you do have a look at the ensembles at this stage, you can see it has generally trended colder than what we saw yesterday. In terms of the mean from around the 18th to the 22nd of November has gone to around average or just a below average right towards the end. And we are seeing more colder runs. There haven't been many more going down to sort of minus 10 level, which is brutally cold, but we're seeing a lot more go below freezing towards the minus five area, which would give the potential, if we did see that air mass move through, for snow further north, across hills quite widely. For the south and for low-lying areas, you really do need minus five or lower, so it still is a bit of a stretch as ever towards the end of November, but we have got more going colder. But for the short term of the next sort of 10 days, it looks generally quite dry in the south. Alternating air masses, of course, we do have uh, low pressure pushing in further northwards. We are going to be seeing those air masses ch uh, change, but we do have higher pressure in control. So we will see weather fronts push through, like we're seeing today with rain sinking southwards, but it should peter out really before it impacts too many areas for the south and the east. You can see a few precipitation signals, but nothing massive. It should be generally mild at times, but we could see some colder um, sort of bits here or there. And of course, in the longer term, we see the massive amount of scatter around 16th, 18th November, where we see maybe half the ensembles going quite cold, whereas the other half are remaining around average or above average. And of course, we can't discount the really warm runs, but we can't discount the very cold runs either. If we do have a Glasgow, which is further northward, so it should be hit by these colder um, ensembles a bit faster than Londonwood. You can see it's very alternating at this stage. Typical zonal sine wave where we see warmer, colder, warmer, colder, sort of flip-flopping uh, every day or so. And you can see a lot of precipitation around over the next 10 days. Not absolutely massive amounts that we have seen before on the ensembles and we have seen throughout this autumn, but still a decent amount. So we're not going to be seeing any massively dry weather. You can see around the 12th to the 14th, pretty mild southwesterly winds. But beyond that, we see the ensembles return to around average, with some going very cold, down to minus 5 or lower. However, others are offsetting it, remaining very, very mild as well. 
So again, not guaranteed we're seeing anything very, very cold, not guaranteed we're seeing anything very warm. At this stage, they both sort of cancel each other out, um, and we're just generally seeing things come out average in terms of the ensembles. But given the operational runs have been very cold, or some of them have been very cold over the last day or so, you've just got to keep an eye, really, on what happens with these cold ensemble runs. And of course, um, I'll be keeping updated here as well. Um, and yeah, we'll just have to see, really, how they do come to fruition um, and what they do update over the next few days because if we did see this colder signal increase over the next maybe two three four days as it comes into this sort of 10 day time frame we'll be not saying whether there will be a cold spell but we'll more be saying how cold will it get or how long will it last if we did see these ensemble runs come off and we did see the general trend go much colder that's what we'll be start talking about maybe in sort of three four five days time it'll be sort of severity and how long it would last so we still got a good few days left before we can guarantee it's going to be cold um, but this stage is looking more encouraging than it was a couple of days ago when we were just seeing straight westerlies um, throughout the middle of november now if we finally do have a look at the precipitation and the max temperatures over the next five days you can see heavier rain pushing in through at the moment but you can see the weather fronts petering out as they head further southwards beyond that you can see a few showers across the north maybe some snow showers as well and generally quite a bit of cloud throughout sunday afternoon and generally nothing too major and then more weather fronts moving in through monday afternoon rain spreading south and east but again petering out as it comes against high pressure and generally just more showers around and we could see some more widespread showers throughout wednesday to thursday across the south but nothing too major now if we have a look at max temperatures you can see today temperatures are pretty cold, around 11, 12 degrees. We still have quite a chilly air mass and quite a lot of cloud around, so it's not going to be rising too much. Quite chilly over Scotland, potentially tonight, so we do have a colder air mass there. Generally, air is into the mid to high single digits. Then towards Sunday afternoon, still pretty chilly, 10, 11, 12 degrees, and maybe only single digits across the north. However, as we head towards sort of Monday morning, still quite chilly, but by Monday afternoon, temperatures are starting to rise in the west. 14, 15 degrees across Ireland, still 9, 10, 11 degrees further eastwards. Throughout Tuesday, we see another colder air mass move through briefly. Um, so a cold morning through Wednesday, but the afternoon, maybe 13, 14 degrees in the south, but quite chilly further north. And that's pretty typical with low pressure further north. It's colder air masses mixing in with more rain. Further south, with higher pressure and control, less, seeing less mixing of the air masses, therefore remaining a little bit milder. And by Thursday, quite mild in the south, 12, 13 degrees, but further northwards, still quite cold, 4, 5 degrees. And of course, you can see the boundary line between um, air masses as well. So there, I do suspect there will be quite a bit of contrast in temperatures over the next week or so as we do see these low pressures in the north and the higher pressure in the south. But at the, this stage, for a lot of uh, you snow lovers out there, people who love winter, wintry weather, all eyes will be on this last half of November and it's the start of December because if it does follow on from what we saw with our what we've been seeing with our winter look aheads is that we kind of were giving us above average chance of seeing some wintriness towards late November, early or mid December. Um, typical with the Enso pattern we're seeing at this stage with the stratosphere um, and with the ECQ QBO. It has favoured generally and statistically a colder start to winter than uh, late winter. So, yeah, we'll just have to keep an eye really what happens within these ensembles and these operational charts. And of course, I'll keep you updated every day on here. So anyway, thanks for watching, hope you enjoy, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.